Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is August 4th, 2016. In this video, I'll point out some potential trading opportunities in the uh, cannabis sector, marijuana stocks. Uh, earlier this year, for those who've been on the site, you know, we, we put up uh, quite a few of those these stocks in the trading room. You know, this is a sector um, that uh, you either have the momentum going in the sector or not. And if not, you try to stay away from these. But once the moment momentum comes in, you'll notice that, uh, as so often is the case, birds of a feather flock together. So uh, right now I'm seeing some potential early, early signs of momentum, some, some breakouts in the sector. Um, those trades we did earlier in the year, you can just use a search function on the site for symbols like GRNH. A lot of these I'll go over today, GRNH. I know we did CANN, um, MGNA might have been on there, uh, quite a few. But uh, uh, the, the gains were explosive as far as percentage terms. You know, we had some of these you know, well over 100%. However, in relative or absolute terms, those gains uh, at least should have been on par with any other trade. Now, what I mean by that is, uh, and I and I cannot emphasize this enough, um, these are extremely aggressive trades. Uh, on a scale one to ten, I'd have to give these a ten. These are penny stocks. They're uh, micro cap stocks, meaning the market cap on most of these companies is, you know, virtually nil. You know, in some cases, you know, well under, you know, even under a million dollars. So. That's that. These are very thinly traded stocks. Some of these, uh, others have volume. Uh, so I want to impress that point that uh, you know, number one, if you're not an aggressive trader, and, or at least you don't want to allocate a little portion of your funds to these aggressive trades, then you may want to stop the video right now and just save yourself the next ten minutes or so and do something else. There are a few. Uh, um, concepts and trading and things I'll point out that apply to trading these stocks that, that also apply to any stocks in general, any stock trading. So I'll get into that and let's start out with that. Uh, that way, if you don't really care about the trade ideas, you know, these uh, same concepts and trading these marijuana stocks may apply uh, again uh, elsewhere in your trading. Uh, so number one, these are aggressive. And as I often harp on, I use a term called beta adjusted position sizing that says you should adjust the position size on your trade up uh, usually down, sometimes upwards if it's a low low volatility security. But uh, in this case, uh, what I'm getting at is adjust it down for the amount of risk that you're taking or the expected volatility. So in this case, and I'll just use a throw out a broad example. If you're going to trade, typically you like to trade in lots of ten thousand dollars in each position uh, on any of these stocks you would probably want to go no more than a thousand dollars, maybe even five hundred dollars. And I know that doesn't sound like much, but if you're looking at gains measured in the you know high double to triple digits, um, then your profit potential is about on par what it would be with a regular you know ten thousand dollar trade that goes up you know eight ten percent. And likewise, in trading these, if you you know typically let's say you target ten twelve percent on a trade and you allow yourself three four percent stop loss, just using an example on a normal trade. Well, you can't run these stocks. You can't trade these stocks with a three or four percent stop loss. Very often, the spreads alone are larger than three or four percent on these. Uh, so, if my point is, if you're shooting for a fifty or hundred percent return, uh, you need to allow yourself a twenty, you know, thirty percent stop loss on uh, these trades. So, that's point number one. Beta just down. Um, your percentage gains will be a lot higher and percentage losses. But then, at the end of the day, your total loss, if wrong or your total profit should be right in line with any other trade. Um, the other thing I would recommend on these is to use limit orders. A lot of these are low priced and some of these penny stocks trading under a dollar a share. Um, so always check the spreads anytime you trade a stock. And if you see a spread more than just a penny or a couple pennies apart, uh, I find it best to use limit orders on those to buy and to sell. Otherwise, you're opening yourself up if you place a limit order. Some brokers won't even accept a limit order on these low price stocks, but if you, if you are able to put that through, they can fill you just about anywhere because uh, there might not be uh, another trade on the other side of the market ready to fill you at that time. So uh, you might put a, a trade in and see yourself immediately filled, you know, 10% or more below what the uh, what the bid price was at the time. So uh, limit orders and um, beta adjustment. And uh, finally, you know, one thing I do like about this sector, especially these obscure, you know, this is an obscure sector, cannabis sector, 
um, is there's a very low correlation to the market. So whatever the stock market's doing, these stocks usually don't care. That's been my experience on certain uh, obscure sectors like this. Uh, you really doesn't doesn't matter what the broad market's doing. And in fact, I, I've often noticed that maybe the broad market's in a sell-off, and these are actually doing well. People flock to these. Uh, so again, you're maybe a little bit protected there if we have a sell-off. But with that being said, I, I you know, I know I spent a lot of time on hammering out the disclosures here and the disclaimers and the risk factors. Those cannot be underestimated. Another thing to note, when you look at a chart and you see, look at the, on this one, we're at CCAN, you see these candlesticks and look how odd these are very, this is thin trading. This is back then and then you can also see on the volume. And then when you look forward more recently, you see the candlesticks are, although very, you know, big price swings on this one you see the volume is coming into the stock lately uh, and you start to see these candlesticks look a little more normal and uh, that's something that's always a red flag if I look at a chart or, or any of these you see that's just going to tell you right there there's very thin trading and the spreads between the bid and ask are thin and that's why you have these funk funky candlesticks some days you have very few if any trades in the stock so you want to ideally stick to stocks that have volume and more normal looking candlesticks like that because the liquidity would be a little bit better all right one final thing is when you have large price swings on any security, what happens is you can see the MACD down here. It looks flatlined along the zero line, even if I zoom in here. Uh, it gets a little better at this point, but I'm going to use a, a PPO in the case of these stocks, which is very similar to a MACD, but will do a better job of... You can see the MACD flattened out behind here. When you have any security with a large range in price or large price swings, PPO usually works a little better. So we'll use that uh, and then move forward. All right, let me just dive into these trade ideas. Uh, they're all unofficial because they're uber aggressive. Um, CCAN, can, uh, Canadian Cannabis. Looks like a break over this, da this downtrend line would uh, spur a rally in that one. I don't have an actual price target, but it'd probably be up to about that 128 or so level, maybe a little bit higher, if the sector continues to catch a bid and you want to see volume come in. This one, Cannabis Science, CBIS, you can see uh, it's it just trades very well in this series of downtrend lines. It trades well to the technicals, in other words. You have these pretty well-defined downtrend lines and the breakouts. Those breakouts, as you notice back here, I have the volume bars muted down somewhat, but if uh, if I, I highlight that, you can see this increase in volume there. You can see the increase in volume here on the breakout. So those are things in trading in general you want to see. If a breakout of a downtrend line, you want to see it confirmed with volume. And because this is a momentum sector, these suckers can run. If you're going to trade them, uh, you better you, you need to move quick. You can see this one shot up you know, in one day. Uh, extreme, you know, what is that percentage terms from just in one day alone from the lows to the highs? I'm just rough estimating here. It's about 150% move. Uh, this one most recently broke out, and this is the theme I'm seeing. You see a breakout. You can see the volume bars down here. I have the volume bars a little muted down, but I think you can make those out. Just like these previous breakouts, it's on above average volume, confirming. This one broke out, back tested, and now appears to be moving higher. After back testing, it took out these these recent highs right here. Uh, so this one looks good, and my price target would be to this longer term downtrend line. We need to flip out to a two day period chart, and you can see that downtrend line coming in off this reaction high, reaction high, three, four. Uh, so that would be the next target. Ideally, I don't see a lot of very well defined horizontal uh, resistance. Although I will say there is some here. Let's go ahead and add a line. I see some reactions back here, some reactions around here, and that that comes in about the 1.9 cent level. In other words, just below two cents a share. Remember, this is a very low price. That's not, you know, that's a, a penny, you know, 1.7 cents a share uh, on CBS. But anyways, chart looks pretty good. Uh, and what I also like to do, one other uh, tip for trading this type of sector is I take a shotgun approach. You can take your favorite pick if you decide to go this route, but what happens is that one may or may not pan out. Uh, so my preference is take a, you know, a half dozen or so names you like, sprinkle a little cash in each one. Um, there's a little maintenance to do to these because you do have to watch these, and once that momentum leaves the sector, they can fall just as fast as they, as they rise. Uh, but here's a CBDS, Cannabis Sativa, and I mean you can see, again, pretty well-defined 
downtrend line, a breakout. This may have been the one I mentioned earlier in the year. I can't remember if this was on that list. I have trend lines on a lot of these. Uh, huge move up, right to resistance. And uh, this is a, a pretty semi-significant uh, resistance level. And we tried to pierce above it today. We didn't, that breakout didn't stick. You can see that there were, the body is just below that level. And that level is 212.86, call it 213 to be safe. So we need to see a break above 213, ideally on uh, on uh, above average volume. And the next resistance, these reaction highs right here, and that comes in around 263 or so. That could be your first target for a quick target. But ultimately, if this sector continues to catch a bid, uh, especially if we see more and more volume and interest come in, I think this one goes all the way up here to... Uh, uh, this resistance zone, the bottom of which comes in around 356, uh, top of which is really where I think it would go is around 370. But to be safe, I always set my sell limit orders a little shy of that. So one to watch, and that would be, you know, that equates to a move of roughly, you know, to the top of that zone, about 73%. Uh, so again, do the math, you know, to take a small position size, you're still doing okay if you hit that 70, you know, plus percent target. EP, EAPH, uh, somewhat thinly traded stock, starting to take some volume. And again, this is the theme I'm, I'm making here. I'm seeing these stocks moving up recently on volume, so there appears to be some interest in the sector. There's a downtrend line. You can replicate that on your own chart. All these are daily time frames I'm looking at so far, and I always use a log scaling, especially when you see large price swings like this. It's a whole different picture uh, if you use a... Um, uh, non-log scaling there's that's what the chart looks like when you use a uh, arithmetic scale or um, non-log scaling so there it is log scaling use that on all your charts if you want to replicate what i'm doing here mjna medical marijuana inc uh, pretty nice chart i believe this one we traded back then earlier in the year yeah this pretty well defined uh, downtrend line a breakout as you can see confirmed by volume like you like to see above average volume ripped right up uh, to this resistance level, we may have had this target. Again, I'd have to reference all those old trades. Uh, most were winners. We might have had a couple losers in there, but uh, we, you know, hit this sector quick. And, and uh, again, it was explosive back then. And you can see this stock, uh, like I said, a lot of these trade very well to the technicals. You can see this support level here around four cents a share. Uh, go back. You have numerous reactions here that acted as support. Those reactions from above, that support broke. The stock came above it acted as support again, acted as resistance from below down here. And this is really a support zone when I have two lines in close proximity. And so most recently we fell down to the bottom of that support zone, hugged it for months. You can see how well, I mean, this is, this is technical analysis. And technical analysis, I can tell you, tends to work better on very low price stocks because most of these stocks, guys, the fundamentals are crap. I'm, I'm sorry to sound crass. You know, a lot of these... Uh, I imagine are just trust fund babies that you know paid the you know whatever it is five thousand dollars to go sit through one of those courses when there was a lot of buzz recently about you know all the states starting to legalize marijuana. Um, yeah, we got a pres presidential election coming up. I imagine Hillary might be more favorable to uh, you know uh, or more liberal with the marijuana laws. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen on the political sphere? I won't even get into that. I probably shouldn't even have mentioned that, but. Uh, maybe that's that's why these things are being bid up here. Um, so, and ultimately, some of these companies could turn out to be huge winners. When you trade penny stocks, you just have to spread it all around there. Don't put too much in because the vast majority of these stocks will uh, probably don't have a sound business model and probably end up going nowhere. But for trading ops, in and out, here are your levels. Uh, this one has already run up to resistance. That would be six cents a share around the six cent level. And uh, if it takes that out, uh, the next move would be, or the next resistance level or target would be about that 7.5 cent level. And uh, we have another target up here. I haven't really finalized targets on this one, but let's just look at that right now. Focus on that 7.5 cent level. Uh, GRNH is the next one. This one we definitely traded back then. I like this chart. I'm going to flip over to a two-day period so you can see this longer-term downtrend line coming in. There is a bullish falling wedge pattern. Let's go back to the daily chart. We had uh, nice positive divergence at the low there. 
and uh, this one broke out. You can see a bull flag here. From the bull flag, you have the flagpole right here, consolidated after the breakout, and then exploded out of that bull flag pattern. And uh, if I recall right, I think that might have been the target that I had, the final target at eight, eight cents a share. And as you can see, just as quickly as they came, almost as quickly as it went up, they came back in, moved back down. This was a target at the time, I believe, the 50, uh, five cent level. And uh, that acted as support recently. And we can see this downtrend line coming in and resistance just above about six cents. To, so to be safe, you want to see this one pop above six cents a share. If and when that happens, I would expect a relatively swift move up to eight cents. Again, look for volume to confirm. Next resistance after that is about the 9.4, 9.5 level. And then, of course, at that previous reaction high, we could certainly put a target there. And again, it's like a game of musical chairs. As long as the momentum players are in this sector and as long as they're taking volume and moving up, they can continue to go up well beyond anybody's expectation. It wouldn't surprise me to see any of these stocks go up two, 300% in just days or, or weeks. Uh, so the way to trade them, I know it's hard psychologically to see those big gains. You can set a trailing stop. If the momentum comes in, uh, let's say that you take this one on that break above six cents, and you don't know whether to take full profits at eight cents a share or let it ride. Well, as it gets up there, you could always set a trailing stop. But best to keep an eye on these. I like to trade these uh, by watching those. Don't leave those stop loss orders on, on in place because they're thinly traded stocks. The market makers can see your order, come back in, pull the stock down just to clip your order, especially if you're trading a large enough size to make them worth it uh, to come down and get it. Uh, so keep that in mind. All right, uh, CGRW, not my favorite, but uh, something. couple things to note here. There was a nice downtrend there. You can see the breakout. This $1 level, $1 is usually a key support and or resistance level on stocks. Usually once stocks cross below that, if they stay below it, they're often the kiss of death. They stay below that $1 level for a long time or go to zero. Uh, but it would be a, a bullish if not technical, it would be a technical event because that is a previous reaction high and we almost got there before. So it is it's resistance, but it's also a psychological level that, that stock can get above that dollar level. So what I have is a, a, a sort of a, a near-term resistance level here. It's slightly downward sloping lines. So I can't give you the exact level on it because that level will change every day, but I can tell you right. It's, uh, let's just keep it safe. See these reaction highs recently? Let's put a horizontal line there. That would be the safe level to wait for a breakout, relatively safe, I should say, about 72 cents a share. So let's say a move over 72 cents, look for volume, and that might propel that stock up to the $1 level, which again is a pretty decent move in percentage terms. CARA, CARA Therapeutics, uh, pretty nice looking chart. We have support here that it's held a couple times down around the 438 level, and this one appears to be bull flagging. You can see this move up here. Uh, when you have a bull flag pattern, you simply take the flag pole, which is the move, the sharp move leading up to the flag formation to the top of the flag. I might have overshot that just a hair. And then you add it to the bottom of the flag wherever that breaks out. And co coincidentally or not, that comes right up to the 780 resistance level that I have here. It's defined by a couple reactions here and a lot of these reactions back there. And I think if we go to the left of the chart, yes. Oh. Those are the same reactions I looked at. So 780, that would be my initial price target. But ultimately, uh, I could see this one going up to up to around this $9 level, 9 to n possibly 940. Let's call it $9 to be safe the next target. Let's go ahead and edit that now. And show value. Get rid of this one. Okay, that makes that a little more clear. Okay, next up, CHUM, Chuma Holdings. Uh, not one of my favorite. The example, it's a good example of a very thinly traded one. You can look at these funky candlesticks. Let's move off that one. I don't care for that one too much. I'm not sure why I flagged that. TRTC, uh, here's one with some interesting levels. You can see how, one, how this one's traded. There was a downtrend line when I flipped back to the two-day period, come back into the daily period. And you see that downtrend line. We had a breakout, a rip up to around that five, uh, 56 level. 
Uh, we have resistance. This one's just clearing. You can see the resistance. Reaction high here, some reactions right there, reaction there. And we're so this one's t taking this resistance level out today. You can see some volume coming to the stock recently. So um, this one looks good up to that $56 level. Again, as long as the momentum stays in the sector. It's like a game of musical chairs. Remember, when the uh, momentum leaves, uh, you don't want to be the last guy standing without a seat. Last guy or gal, I should say. All right, ENRT up next. Somewhat thinly traded one, certainly a low price. This is, you know, three, three, th over just over three cents a share, but it's taken out this long term downtrend line. Uh, it goes back the last couple of years. And ultimately, that one, the next solid resistance is up here around 49, almost 50 cents a share. So, you know, three point. You know, 3.2 cents a share now. Maybe some room to go, but again, not my favorite only because it's pretty thinly traded. Um, CVSI, CV Sciences, nice downtrend line. Again, you can replicate this on your chart using a log scaling. So the story, if you see a trend line go off to the left of the chart, you have to go back a little farther here. So we can see that trend line goes back to the 2014, well, this level, not the highs, but uh, at that point. So let's go back to the daily chart. So we saw a breakout recently. This was a false breakout. That's probably why I circled that. Then a breakout, and it's remained above that downtrend line. And this is the this is the downtrend line that I'm looking at now, this shorter-term downtrend line. Quite a few reactions. So a pop above that, I think I may have already set an alert. If not, I'll set an alert right now. And uh, a break above that level, I should add, we have two reactions right here these two reactions. Let's get rid of that circle from that false breakout. And uh, that level is 66 or 6.6 .6 cents. Boy, it's hard dealing with these penny stocks. So yeah, 6.6 .6 cents. You want to probably sell just below there. Um, then again, you can, uh, like I said, you can trail your stops up and let the profits run on these if the sector really starts gaining some traction. Next one up, F-U-L-L, -L, full, full circle capital corp. Which reminds me, some of these st uh, these stocks aren't pure plays on the marijuana sector. This one, for example, is a, a financial service stock. And if I remember correctly looking into it, they loan money to a lot of these startup marijuana companies. So um, not a direct play. I don't believe they're selling or growing cannabis. Um, but again, they're profiting from the companies they're lending to. If the sector does well, maybe they do well. And uh, and either way, a nice resistance level here around 274. It looks like it's been tapping up against. And uh, $3 would be the target on that one. C-A-N-N, -N, General Cannabis Corp. This one I believe we did trade before. You can see I've highlighted here uh, the breakout. This was a nice downtrend line. Bullish falling wedge pattern confirmed with divergences. Breakout on high volume confirmed. And that sucker ripped from there. Went up to that $2 level for about a 300% gain in just a matter of weeks uh, to give you an idea what these guys can do. Let's come back down. And we're just above. This is a pretty significant support level here around 76. And uh, the sector starts to take some uh, some volume and, and the momentum continues. This is, I think this one's a little bit bigger player, so it might have a good shot. I'm, I imagine they'll step in and buy this one and take it back up to... A first target would be a dollar twenty, then two dollars, and ultimately, if it can break above there, this one's good to you know about the four dollar level, a little above that. A E R O Arrow Grow. Uh, we need to go back a little bit longer term. You can see this downtrend line. So we had a nice downtrend line breakout back test, a successful back test of that downtrend line, and prices are now moving higher. Uh, we had a divergent low at this point. I probably drew it on the MACD. I'll show it to you here on the PPO. Divergence confirmed on the RSI as well. So bullish divergent low uh, moved up. There it is, broke out of that uh, above the downtrend line, back tested, and is now moving higher. It's taken out these previous two reaction highs. You can see the resistance levels here. Uh, call it 330, uh, which we tried to take out, but it fell back below. So I think the next move above, especially above this previous reaction high from what was that yesterday, that that should have cleared this level. This th yesterday was just a momentum overshoot. So look for the next move above yesterday's high of. Uh, was that 345? Yeah, 345, and that should, uh, as long as the volume stays in this stock, propel it up to about the 408 level, and ultimately my target on this one be uh, 483 around there. AMMJ, American Cannabis Company, 
Uh, another one we have to go back a couple years to see. It was very thin at this point, but it's been taking more and more volume, so the candlesticks have normalized. Same story, a breakout and a back test, although this one fell back below the downtrend line. And right now I'm looking at this downtrend line here. Uh, we have this downtrend line, which it broke out, back test fell back below, but this one has really nice support around uh, eight, you know, just over the eight cent mark. Uh, so you could also take it, you know, all right off that level with a stop not too far below. When I say not too far, everything's relative. You got to give it a little bit of room here on these guys because their intraday swings are are pretty volatile in percentage terms. You know, we're talking a penny stock, so you know a tenth of a cent is a pretty big move on a you know ten cent share. Uh, but either way, you can see targets. If this one does go up, this would certainly be my first target here around uh, the 19, almost 20 cent level. So set your sell limit order a little bit below if you want to get out there. Otherwise, ride it up, trail stop. 34 is the next target, and then you can see 52 and then 59. All right, next one up, DEWM. Looks pretty thin, uh, but it's at support. It has a pretty nice support zone here, and it's sitting right on the top of that support zone. There's the bottom of the support zone around, uh, this one's a fraction of a cent. This is 0 0.0017, the bottom of that support zone. The top is about uh, 0 0.0018. So you can take it off support. Again, super thinly traded, so not one of my favorite, but it's also a, it has a nice downtrend line. It just hasn't taken any volume yet. Uh, so just one to keep an eye on, and if and when it does, my guess it goes up to that uh, 0, 0, uh, 0, 0, 0.003 cent level. EDXC, uh, somewhat thinly traded one, but uh, pretty decent downtrend line. Looks like a descending triangle pattern, and there's a stock you could take at support. It has support here around the... Uh, 0 0.0248 level it's at 0 0.025 so just above support now so there's one you could take on support give it a stop a little bit below or wait for a break out of this downtrend line targets would be 0 0.0332 a little bit below that these are the actual support or resistance levels next one 0 0.0378 and then we'll just have to go from there again assuming the sector continues to take some uh some volume and the momentum players are in it. All right, we're almost done here with these names. This is ERBB, American Green, a nice little descending price channel, very thinly traded, very cheap stock. This is one-tenth of one penny, so take it at your own risk. Any of these, of course, they're all risky. But uh, from the technicals, again, te traders trade these stocks, especially these you know, sub one penny, sub one cent stocks. They're trading them on technicals and rarely on fundamentals. Sometimes if there's some news on the company, but I imagine this company has no future. That's just my guess looking at the share price and I don't know what the market cap is, but you can see they, they trade them, you know, here's a, you know, this is a two day period chart. So you had this downtrend line back here and uh, that downtrend line was taken out and the stock exploded and the volume came into it and realized there was no value in that company. It just drifted down. The momentum was out of the sector, but here we are. We're setting up again with an even larger downtrend line with this little sub-channel to watch. So that would be your first buy signal. Get back to the daily chart. Pop over that level. Pop over this level would take this one, I mean, easily up to this, you know, 0, 0 0.46 level. And, you know, percentage terms, that's 400% or so. So worth it, you know, sprinkle a little cash if you want. All right, that's it. That's the only ones that I have that stand out. There's a lot out there. If anybody follows a sector, I would welcome any other attractive looking setups. And um, good luck if you take them and just, just don't get married to them if they go the other way. Use, use stops, uh, you know, with your own risk tolerance and uh, trading style. And uh, again, these aren't official trade ideas. I wouldn't put sub you know penny stocks on as official trade ideas just something to share for the uh for those of you gunsling traders i call it all right this has been randy finney with right side of the chart hope you enjoyed it